Let's go ahead and get started with these. Uh, I'm on the list, I think it's to add the microphone, I'm just start. I want to talk about this library called Cascadia. Cascadia is actually written by a, a Washington resident uh, in Eastern Washington. But first I want to talk about a little bit of a story that motivates this example. What is this? What are we looking at here? Yeah, Motorola surfboard. What, why do you come to a page like this? Yeah, your internet doesn't work, or somebody in your house is like, the internet doesn't work, so you come here and you're hating yourself for doing IT at home. And I, so I was having this problem with my internet, and I realized I wanted to capture some of these values and store them like in a bulk DB database over time. And so I started looking around with some Go code to do that. Uh, but the first thing I did is I did a view source, and uh, I noticed this Microsoft front page 4.0 uh, was on their home page, which is kind of funny. Um, dug a little deeper and said, okay, like all that data is here is pretty easily accessible. Really, this is a stream scraping problem. I need to write a little script that reaches out, pulls these da this data down, and saves it off. And so here's kind of a decision tree if you're screen scraping. How many screen scrapers do we have? Yeah, a lot of screen scrapers out there. So if you're going to screen scrape, you can go unstructured, meaning that you can do some crazy stuff with substrings or something like this and find what you need. Uh, you can use regular expressions, also like perfectly reasonable approach. Sometimes it can be executable line noise. Um, or a structured approach, meaning you're trying to make some sense out of this document, parse it, get a tree value, a, a tree of values back, and then operate on those trees. Okay? So you can use once you get a tree, you can use something like XPOC. Maybe if you've done some Selenium work or some other test work, you've done something like that, you parse this thing into a tree and you apply this XPOC to it. An alternative to XPath are CSS selectors, and that is in fact the problem that Cascadia solves. You give it a DOM tree, or a, just a tree of, of the, the HTML, a selector, and it will give you back a result set. So the question is, how do you turn this into that? And that's not a problem that Cascadia solves. However, the good news is, is in one line of code using the Go standard library, you can just call HTML parse, hand it an I.O. reader, and it will give you back, uh, a, it will give you back a tree. And in, in fact, it will do things like use HTML5's fallback mechanisms and try and fix like unbalanced tags. It's, it's actually pretty good. So one line of code, you parse it. The rest of this code is from a sample. It just does some sort of recursive descent of that tree. Um, but we don't even have to do that. So one line of code to parse it. So the next question is, is how do you grab particular element values? So you have this tree that represents what you're looking at over here on the, the cable room screen. How do you get a particular value out of that tree? That's where the CSS selectors come in. Uh, but you're probably more accustomed to seeing CSS selectors in the context of writing HTML and applying some sort of style sheet to it. And so I thought we'd start with a couple of examples here. So the selector we're looking at on the left, uh, the selector text is actually just the UL, two, two characters, UL. And so what's that, what does that do? It matches the UL tag in the little document snippet. So it'll match the UL, but nothing else in there. And then, of course, apply those styles. So that's like the simplest possible selector. A little bit more complicated. This one, all paragraph elements P will be styled with the specified rules, but only if they are siblings of H2. So there's four paragraph types, only three of those four are matched. Why? Because the first three are siblings of H2. And so that little squiggly mark is what gives you that indicator. Um, another idea about how this little mini language works, if you want to match elements based on the presence or the value of a particular attribute, you can use this syntax here. Input type equals text. It will match everything that looks like that document there. Because you're getting some idea about how if you have this tree that represents your HTML document, or XML document, or whatever, you can apply these selector rules to get a list back of results, okay? So again, I just want to highlight one line of code. We've done one line of code to parse, one line of code here to match based on a particular selector rule. And so in my, in my example, the, the little cable modem UI, this, this, I've changed it, by the way, if you're trying to hunt me down. Uh, it has a MAC address, serial number, et cetera. And so what I want to do here is I want to write a, a, a simple method here, scrape address field, that I, I give it serial number and it gives me back this value. I give it MAC address and it gives me back this value. And so the first line of code there, it's formatting a query. And that query up there, it kind of translates to the, at the bottom here, serial number. You can see TD contains serial number plus TD. So this says, give me the TD that contains serial number, but actually don't give me that, give me the next CD, which is this one here. Okay, so I take that query string, I compile it, and I match the first node. If I don't find a match, I return an error. Otherwise, grab the first child, the data, trim it, and hand it back. The reason we get a child is because these are actually text nodes underneath the TD. Okay, so one line of code to parse, one line of code to execute a selector and grab a result set back. Pretty easy. Uh, the question is, like, how do you know what to type in there for the selector query? Like, 
how do you know this? You can read the docs. Um, you can also kind of cheat and just use Chrome, and you can say inspect element, right click, and you can say copy, either give me an X path or a selector that matches this particular node, and that will give you kind of a starting point as well. Chrome also has a, a mode in the developer mode where you can kind of dollar dollar open parent quote, and you can type in a selector string there, and you can sort of debug it interactively um, in the browser. So yeah, so that's kind of how I scrape some values on my cable modem using Cascadia. If you want to find out more, uh, the first link should you have to be a web scraper. The second one is this thing called Go Query, which is a higher level construct that acts more like um, jQuery, but using Go and Cascadia, in fact. That's a link to the standard library. XML path is an XPath like, not a full XPath implementation, but an XPath like language that you can do similar things with, and then a reference on CSS selectors. So that's Cascadia. Uh, any questions? Maybe I'll take one for time. Any questions? Yeah, go ahead. So the question was, did I look at anything like Gokokiri? Gokokiri. I did not, but that sounds like another solution to the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the question was, is d does the same format you did using Chrome, for example, does that work over here in Cascadia? Um, it supports a, a relatively large portion of the spec. Um, I actually got kind of distracted from my cable modem problem and ended up putting up like uh, two or three PRs to Cascadia to add some more uh, support. So the support is really good. The support is pretty good. Yeah. Okay, with that.